Okay, happy Friday, you guys. Uh, we are uh, going to talk, continue our discussion on latches today. Uh, but first, a few announcements. So, quiz uh, 15 is right now available for you to answer on Gradescope. Uh, it uh, covers some of the content uh, from last lecture. Um, so, please go on to Gradescope and uh, answer a few four questions uh, quickly. Uh, if you want to do that right now, go for it. Um, today is Friday, March 19th. We are working on homework 8, which is due March 23rd. Homework 9, I will be posting that early next week. It is, it is going to be mainly about latches. So you will have another week to work on homework 9. Studio 5 has been posted and you guys have been working on it. It is due March 31st. So you still have uh, a, 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 a long way to go with the, the due date for this. But because it has three tasks, um, the, the checkoff process can can be a bit slow because of that and uh, which is the reason why I'm recommending everyone to get a head start on this. Start early on Studio 5. Do not wait until last minute. Um, Studio 6 um, is bas basically going to be a, a, a simulation. Um, I'm going to be posting that next week. There's no hurry on that. Questions or concerns about the homeworks or studios one two three knowing uh, me i'll be less try to get start early on studio five guys uh, then you can relax after studio five you can relax on the studio uh, because it will be simulation but for studio five um Get it done early. All right, let's continue. We have been talking about the bistable element, the cross coupled NOT gate configuration over here. Um, and then we said we cannot really control the input. So let's put two inputs R and S standing for set and reset. And let us have two cross coupled NOR gates in this particular configuration where you are connecting the output of one to the input of other and then vice versa for the bottom gate as well. And by doing that, you are able to control what the latch is outputting in terms of Q and QN, where Q is your true output and QN is the complemented form of the output. Not always, but that's what you would uh, uh, need from this latch. One output Q, the complemented from, form of it in QN, and two inputs SNR standing for set and reset. And for sequential elements, we are not going to be looking at truth table. We are actually going to look at a characteristic table or the next state table. And the difference is in a truth table, which is appropriate for combinational logic, the output, say, for example, F would be dependent on the current values or the present values of all the inputs, all the combination of the inputs. So that's a, a, a truth table. But for a characteristic table, it has values, for example, last Q. Right. This is not 0 or a 1. It could be a 0 or it could be a 1. So it is more about the characteristic of the sequential element as opposed to laying out all the input combinations and telling me what the output is as we saw in the truth table case. So it's often referred to as the characteristic table of a latch. So we saw this uh, last class. Then we said, all right, let's break uh, every piece of this SR latch. Let's try to look at the NOR version. The reason is there's also a NAND version of this. Uh, which works the same with a couple of differences uh, in terms of active levels. And we are also going to take a look at that later on. Now, if you're looking at a NOR based SR latch, it is because you have NOR gates, it is particularly important to reflect on what the NOR to table uh, provides us, right? So one fact that we know about a NOR to table is, is that if one of the inputs is one, the output is immediately zero. I don't have to wait for the other input to come in. However, if one input is zero, then I need to wait for the other input to come in. And if it is zero, only then my output is one. So the important property over here is if one of the inputs is one, I right away know that the output of that NOR gate is going to be zero. And I have two of them over here. So by using this property, let us start analyzing this SR latch. 
And you will hear me refer to this configuration as the cross-coupled configuration. And I suppose, you, you know, if you look at the logic diagram over here, it is pretty clear why they are called cross-coupled, right? Because there is a coupling from input to output in a cross manner. That's the, uh, hence the name. Now, we started looking at the analysis for this and case one was when we are trying to reset the latch and we know we are resetting the latch because we have made that R input one and we have made that S input zero, right? So we said, all right, let's start with S being set to zero, R being set to one in red. And the moment you do that, after the propagation delay of this particular uh, NOR gate, Q is going to go to zero. It, I don't know what it was before, but it is going to be zero because of that one. Uh, let's see, there's a question, a couple, a latch more action. Oh my gosh. Uh, knife has landed. <laughs> All right. You are trying to reset the latch with making that input one. And when you make that one after the propagation delay of the NOR gate, Q is going to be zero. Why? Because one of the inputs of this NOR gate is one. I don't need to worry about the other input. I right away know that the output is going to be zero. And that zero is now available at the input of the bottom NOR gate. And because this was zero, I actually had to wait for me to compute the output QN. And once that zero came in from the top NOR gate, after another propagation delay of the bottom NOR gate, QN is going to be one. Now, that was my starting state. Uh, QN moves half as slow as Q, right. Uh, QN is going to change after two times the propagation delay uh, of the NOR gate. Uh, Q is going to change instantly, but that doesn't apply for all the cases. Uh, in this one, yes, but not always. Uh, we, we, we'll see why it doesn't apply everywhere. Now, if you start with that configuration, you know Q is zero and uh, QN is one, which is why we are calling that state uh, a reset state, but what about us trying to store that zero? Because remember, we had three objectives for a latch. Make a one, store it. Make a zero, store it. Storing it itself was the third objective, right? So if you want to store it, my claim is that you can make both the inputs zero and you should be able to store it. That's my claim. Let's see if it works out or not. So you have changed R from one to a zero you didn't really change S, but after you have changed R from zero to uh, one to zero, they are both zero now at some time. But because of R being zero now and one being available from QN from the previous reset state, that hasn't changed yet. You have changed the input, but the output is going to be the same for some time. Because of that one, this is going to be kept at zero. This is going to be held at zero, Q. And that zero comes in over here and says, okay, zero or nor zero, this is going to be held at one. So this is one of the stable states, right? So you were able to reset the latch, make Q zero, and then you were able to store it. And that store state and the reset state, they are both stable. Questions about this? That This is kind of where we left off from the, the previous lecture. Now you're going to hear, as you guys uh, type up your questions, I, you're going to hear me talk about Q, last Q, Q plus. There are so many variations to the terminology with which we are referring our old output and the new output. So let me just break down those things for you. Uh, I'm going to write it maybe over here. So one is Q and last Q. So this was old and this is your next Q, right? It's talking about the same, uh, same outputs, same output. This is what it was earlier and this is what it is now. 
you could also refer to this as q new uh, let me use a different q new and q previous so some textbooks follow that what was q earlier what is q now another way to write the same thing is q plus and q so depending on what you are following you may see one or the other variation of this the bottom line is you based on how the signals are being named will need to uh, analyze uh, to, uh, to, to understand which one is the previous one which one is the new one so in our case we are, we are right now we are in this this usage right now q and last q but it is always referring to this output as something it was and something it is next so you could find several variations all right let's move on let's do this now this was clear right so let's talk about case two now this is new we have not done this yet this is going to be called a set state why i have made my s input one so hopefully we will be able to set our output q to one and consequently i would expect qn to be zero because it's a complemented form of the output let us actually see if that works or not so the moment you know s is 1, what do you say about qn? If you know s is 1, what do you know about qn? qn is 0, right? One of the inputs is uh, 1, you right away know that the output qn is going to be 0. You don't have to wait for the other input from q to come in. Now if that is 0 and this is 0, what would q be? Because this 0 actually appears here. So what would Q be? Q would be 1, right? Is this going to be a stable state? Is it going to stay like this until I change something about my input? Is this a stable state? Yes, it is absolute, uh, absolutely a stable state. This is 0, this is 1, this is 1, hence this is 0. That 0 appears here. That 0 with this 0 makes it 1. That 1 comes here. 1 and 1, 0. It's all going to be stable absolutely stable uh, until i mess with it and you can see that we were able to set the output so i'm going to call this my set state uh, let's see set state q is one and q n is zero and i'm calling this my set state so make output one accomplished store it let's try to see if we can store it and again my claim is going to be the same if you want to store something you have got to make both inputs go to a zero so with a blue color i'm going to say let us try to make both inputs s and r zero so what would happen if i do that so i'm going to write the same thing here let's try to store it let's try to store q equals 1 and qn equals 0. What I really want is my q plus to be the same as q or my uh, q to be the same as last q or I want q new to be the same as q previous, right? That's what I mean when I say store it. I've changed my uh, input, uh, this one. When I change this S from 1 to 0, what can you say about this input right here? The other input to the bottom NOT gate. So this is 0. What about this? It is still 1, right? Nothing has changed on the output side. That one is available over here. So if that one is available over here, That is going to make sure that this 0 continues to be a 0. So I've changed my input, but my QN at least has not changed yet. And that 0 is now connected to the input of the top NOT gate, a new 0, and the new input uh, R is 0, that is going to keep this at 1. You guys see that? So, here, 
propagation delay of that NOR gate is actually helping us uh, uh, do this, right? So one continues to be a one at the output even though you have changed the input. Hence stored, hence memory, hence held. So I can say uh, actually the same thing, right? So I'm just going to copy these two statements here and say, yeah, my last queue and my new queue are the same and I'm able to store this. Align it. Perfect. So this I was able to achieve uh, by making S0 and R0 and I when I did that I got Q to uh, Q to be the same as last Q and QN to be the same as last QN. Alright, questions here? So this is easy peasy up, up, up till now, right? Reset, then store. Set and store. Things are working out so far. I, I suppose so far things have been, um, you know, pretty straightforward. Next, we have a confusion state or the head scratcher state because there are a few problems here. Case 3 is R input is 1 and S input is 1. So if R input is 1, what can you tell me about Q? And if S input is 1, what can you tell me about QN? Both are 0. Bennett says both are 0. And he's absolutely right. Both are 0 because the input to one of the input to the NOR gates is a 1. Then my next question is going to be, is this stable? Right now, as it stands, is it stable? Yes, it is. That zero appears here, that zero appears here. But because of this one, these both are going to be uh, staying at zero. So it is stable, but there is a problem. The problem is we wanted that Q and QN to be complement forms of each other. So one problem is that Q and QN are not different. They are the same. So that's that's a problem, right? So I'm going to call this the not allowed state. There are bigger problems here, but it is not allowed because of the fact that Q equals QN equals zero. I'm calling that the not allowed state. Use not between S and R and control one switch. Yes. That will work, but we are going to call it a, a different name. Yes, 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 absolutely. We are going to call it a different latch. Because I cannot call it SR latch anymore, right? If I'm going to put a NOT gate between them to avoid... Oh, I have another question. Uh, because of it, there are other problems that can happen too. How would you make it a zero though? Uh, guys, hang with me for a little bit. Don't jump the gun yet. There, there is a big problem with this circuit that we have not resolved yet. Which is, let us try to store this. So, so far it is, the only problem so far is that the outputs are both the same. They are not complements of each other. But so far the good news is that both of them, are uh, this circuit right now is stable, right? So, the problem become, comes in when we try to store it. So let's try to store it. Let's try to store Q equals zero. How do I store this? Any ideas? How do I store this? I need to make both the inputs R and S go to zero instantly. At the same time, I need to make this guy go to zero and this guy need to go to zero. I actually did a blunder. If I did that, I actually did a blunder. And if you are trying to analyze this on the fly in your head, and if you are getting confused and you are getting slight headache, then you are right. That's exactly what I would expect you to be doing right now. 
तो सेट बटन स्लैश सो अ सेट बटन और वायर नो सो दीज इनपुट्स कुड बी कनेक्टेड टू सम स्विच सम बटन वॉट एवर वॉट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू फंक्शन एज अ बाइनरी इनपुट एंड दीज आउटपुट्स कुड बी हुक्ड ऑन टू एन एल ई डी और सम सेगमेंट वॉट एवर आउटपुट यू वॉन्ट टू यूज बट द इश्यू हैपन्स वेन आई ट्राई टू मेक दिस वन टू अ जीरो एंड एट द सेम टाइम इफ आई मेक दिस वन इन टू अ जीरो द क्वेश्चन इज वॉट हैपन्स सो वॉट यू थिंक हैपन्स ओवर हियर what would the outputs go to you get 11 all right the outputs were 0 and 1 here and because you made this guy a 0 and this guy a 0 now you have that 0 over here you have this 0 over here making this into a 1 okay so that changed to 1 and the same thing happened at the bottom right that changed to 1 and they both happened uh, at the same time or at different times what was it when did this change occur did it occur at the same time or at the same time absolutely because we changed the inputs at the same time this changed occur the the change at the output from 0 to 1 0 to 1 happened at the same time theoretical yes all of this is theoretical yes you're right uh, all of this is assuming that the propagation delay of the bottom and the top nor gates is exactly the same so hence theoretical so let's see this changed from 0 to 1 that changed from 0 to 1 um let me ask you th ask you this if this change occurred at time t1 what time does this change occur at the output so the input changed at time t1 t1 plus the delay right not two times the delay for one it is just the delay right so it, the output over here is going to change at uh t1 plus tpd and t1 plus tpd both at the same time i'm assuming of course that the propagation delay uh is the same this is not stable this will oscillate you got it now you see both of these outputs are one which are in turn inputs to the to the gates so what is going to happen now those ones are going to try to make the queues go to zero and then those zeros along with these zeros will try to make it one and then that oscillation between 0 1 0 1 0 is going to continue as long as two things are true one you keep snr both at zero or uh, so and the propagation delay of the top and the bottom gates are exactly the same so this would go 0 1 0 1 0 1 and it will keep going and this will also do the same thing it will keep oscillating oscillations uh and it would be a frequency of 1 over t delay that's right yes it would keep going based on the uh 1 over the tpd propagation delay of the uh, nor gates which i am assuming that they are exactly the same as of now right so let us try to recapture here the first problem with the circuit was that both my outputs were zero when i made s and r both equal to 1 they were not complements of each other that was the that was the first problem which is why i called it the not allowed state the bigger problem of meta stability happened when i tried to store this by going from 1 1 to 0 0 when i tried to do that both my q and qn went from 00 to 11 to 00 to 11 they were both the same and they were uh, continuously going back and forth between 0 and 1 uh, hold on uh, what happens if propagation delay is not the same that's a, that's a very good question now if the propagation delay is not going to be the same then you are going to actually get you are, you are not going to get oscillations you are going to get a stable state 
Remember, I am calling this meta stability. What does meta stability mean? It is stable only under certain conditions, right? Meta stability. It is stable only when certain conditions are met, not always. So the condition for uh, being unstable is R and S both are at zero at the same time and the propagation delay of both the NOR gates is exactly the same. If any one of them is not true, then you will not get oscillations. It, you will actually get stability because you look at this. If this guy is responding at this, it, suppose the, the propagation delay through this guy is 10 nanoseconds and the propagation delay through this guy is 20 nanoseconds, what is going to happen? When you change this from 1 to 0 and 1 to 0 on both sides, this guy became 0 and, and that became 0 first, right? Before this could, could happen. So you are going to settle in one of the stable states. What are those? Either the set state or the reset state. Because one output is being computed earlier than the other output. So that output is going to be uh, st stored or remain the same for an additional 10 nanoseconds which is what will help in the latch to st get stable uh, in one of the states right so uh, one of the states because if this way this was switched with this it would be the other uh, state so if i go back to my uh, mountain top hill top right the meta stability is over here that's when you are holding things at the knife's edge i have made input 1 1 my output is 0 0 that's that's going to be stable uh, only then the moment I make the inputs go to 0, 0, I am going to be unstable. And one of the ways to reach this side or this side, the set state or the reset state is if one of the NOR gates is going to have a different um, propagation delay than the other. If they are both the same, that is the only time this goes from 0 to 0, both go to 1, 1 both go to 0, 0, both go to 1, 1, and so on. You guys see that? There is another... Is there confusion about this? Oh, you guys already answered that. Yes, it, it does. Um, th there's another thing to, to kind of note here. Practically, both the inputs to go from 1, 1 to 0, 0 is um, not practical, right? What scenario would we want metastability? We wouldn't. We wouldn't want to be in the metastable state. We, we are going to try to get rid of it. Alright, so just think about the kind of requirements that I have to follow to make sure that inputs R and S go from 1, 1 to 0, 0 exactly at the same time. That's going to be, you know, uh, I hope you see that Practically, suppose you R and S are being controlled by two switches, right? So if I asked you to press or unpress uh, two switches exactly at the same time, is it practical to expect that that is going to happen? Remember, this is of the scale of a few nanoseconds. So when you are trying to press something at the same time or unpress something at the same time, you are going to have a slight, unless it is automated, right? Unless it is absolutely automated and synced, this is not going to be possible. Now, another thing that we kind of uh, uh, have to save us from metastability is the fact that both of these NOR gates 
uh, may not have exactly the same uh, uh, propagation delay. The manufacturer, when they design this, they will have some uh, tolerance. So that might save us. When you go from 1, 1 to 0, 0, and you're trying to press those buttons to go to 0, 0, for example, you might uh, actually go from, you might actually reset first or set it first, and then you may end up in the store state, which is fine, right? So because of this happening at the same time, that is what the problem is. If they happen a little bit off, even a few nanoseconds off, then we will not have that problem. So when you try to store it, you need, uh, you had oscillations by making, how did you store it? You tried to store it by making SS0 and RS0. Uh, even if it was, it wouldn't be possible. You would need to, the propagation delay and everything to be within a, probably a femto. That's right. Yeah. So both conditions have to be met. I need to make R, S go from 1, 1 to 0, 0 exactly at the same time and the propagation delay of both the NOR gates to be exactly the same. Only then you will have those oscillations. So theoretically, yeah, you will see it. But if you try to actually put this on to a uh, into an actual circuit form and play with it, it is going to be very difficult for you to actually see this phenomena uh, happen with the LEDs uh, lighting up and going off and lighting up and going off uh, very, very quickly. It might be very, very, very difficult to monitor that. Uh, in, in any case, they will, they will be happening at a, such a fast rate that uh, you will think that they are on all the time. Um, but in reality, in practice, it, it, you are not going to uh, be able to uh, implement this kind of situation, the meta stability, uh, because of practical constraints. All right, so let's see, let's uh, kind of finalize this here. So the problem when you try to store it was that Q comma Q N uh, oscillate. Zero one, zero one, keep going. Um, so, what are some thoughts here, right? Um, one thought is, uh, maybe I don't want to store, right? Maybe if I get rid of this uh, S equals zero and R equals R equals zero, if I didn't store it, then I might not have had this problem. If I never attempted to store it, I wouldn't have this problem. But then if you don't, don't have that configuration, how are you going to be able to store the set state? How are you going to be able to store the reset state? So you have to kind of keep that S equals zero, R equals zero store state alive, right? So you, you, you cannot really get rid of it. Um, but if you did, one benefit of that is that my not allowed state is al also going to be uh, not happening, right? If I made sure that S and R inputs are always the same, uh, always different. If they are always different, then I lose. Okay, so let me write that. Um, need something so that uh, S does not equal R, right? If you if S doesn't equal R say zero zero doesn't happen and one one doesn't happen then you lose two things you lose store and you lose not allowed both of them you lose i'm okay with this i'm actually okay with this if i'm okay with losing the not allowed state but i don't want to lose the store state so some a possible solution is that we find other way we find different way to store you guys see that 
all right uh, a lot of chatter in the chat box let's see uh, how much of this should i be reading this is perfectly level but that would require propagation delay to be exactly the same for both yes that's right that would require them to be exactly the same uh, it could be slightly different and if you had an oscilloscope you could probably see it for a few nanoseconds or so uh, yeah but that kind of oscilloscope is going to be extremely uh, costly to purchase that can resolve nanoseconds uh, femtoseconds picoseconds uh, let's see right i suppose that's true use a nand gate with inputs s and r oh, okay N nand gates will also have the same problems um as an enable right so uh, enable right that's where we are going we are going to add more inputs so that we store we are able to store uh keys i have 1.3 million that's it oh that's <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. All right, other questions about this. So set state, we are happy with, we were able to store it to. Reset state, we are happy with, we were able to store it to. But the not allowed state with R and R equal one and F, uh, S equal one, that was the not allowed state because both the outputs were appearing in the same uh, level, zero. They were not complements of each other. But the bigger problem with that is when you try to store it, uh, you had oscillations uh, depending on certain uh, uh, limitations that both R and S um, uh, go to uh, zero at the same time and the propagation delay of the NOR gates is exactly the same which is going to be a little bit difficult to achieve practically. All right. Uh, what was I going to say? All right. So suppose you are in this metastable state, right? Is there a way to come out of it? You are in this metastable state. You may you somehow managed to go from one one to zero zero exactly at the same time, and it so happens that the propagation delay of both the NOR gates is exactly the same. If all those things are true, you end up in oscillations. Is there some way you can come out of it? What would you need to do? to come out of metastability set either s or one that's right so you would have to go to one of the stable states which is set or reset so you act you can use these two inputs uh, to go to one and you're out of metastability you don't have that problem anymore that's exactly right you can go to one of the stable state get out of it okay uh, now Based on the three cases that we discussed, the set, uh, reset, um, and we were also storing it, so that's your um, third state, and the not allowed state, let us try to write the next state tables or the characteristic tables of the SR latch, which is the NOR version that we are looking at. So when S is uh, 0 and R is 0, what should I write for Q plus? Q plus is your new Q, right? So what should I do for Q plus? What am I calling S equals zero and R equals zero state? What am I calling this state? Store state, right? That's my store state. Uh, what would be the next one? reset what would be the next one that and the villain in all of this the last one bad state okay <laughs> not allowed all right That's right. So those are my four states. So if you are in the store state, what should Q plus equal? Look at this. Uh, uh, look at this uh, uh, terminology here. 
Q plus or Q or Q nu. Those are what happens next. These are from previous old ones. I am using this guy right now. So what should Q plus B when you are in the store state? New should equal old. So Q plus should equal Q. And how about in the reset state? What should Q equal? Zero. Independent of the previous output, right? Independent of the previous output. Whatever it was, it will go to zero now. Uh, next, set state. What should, the, what should the output be? One. All right. What about the, the uh, not allowed state? Zero. But I'm going to say not allowed. Don't care for it. But you guys are right. It is actually going to be zero. But because I'm trying to not allow it, I'm going to put a don't care situation over there. I don't want it to be allowed. Now, if you look at the Q, um, what is, what can Q be? Zero or a one, right? So this can be either a zero or a one. Two options, right? Now my old output um, could have been a zero, could have been a one. Now, another thing to note here is that I have put a column for Q plus. I have not put a column for Q n plus, right? I'm not monitoring the complemented output. I'm just monitoring the Q output. Now, can I transition this next state table into a little bit more uh, detailed characteristic table? So, I, I, what I'm really doing is, I have the output Q, which can be either a zero or a one, so let me capture both those possibilities by looking at Q, my old output, as an input. So my 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 truth table over here, my table over here is going to be zeros, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, and zero, one. Uh, two zeros, uh, then you have got that then you have got that and then you've got that. So I'm simply capturing both possibilities of Q in every one of those four states. Store, reset, set and not allowed. So I suppose I can also color code this, right? Like these two guys are going to be my not allowed state and ink these two guys are my set state and these two guys are my reset state and these two guys are my store state all right question what should i put here zero one zero zero one one xx all right Excellent. That's right. So I'm in my store state. So whatever it was earlier is going to remain as is. So this should be zero. It was a zero. It will continue to be a zero. Next. It was a one. It will continue to be a one. Stored. Next two states are my reset state. It doesn't matter what you were earlier. I'm going to reset you, zero, zero. It doesn't matter what you were earlier, I'm going to set you, one, one. And it doesn't matter what you were earlier, I'm going to not be allowed. So these are your um, next state tables for a SR latch. With this, you can uh, derive certain things. For example, do I have this? All right, so store, reset, set, 
not allowed. So all of this is being uh, captured over here. This is the table that we derived on the previous uh, slide. We wrote out all of them. The uh, hold or store or memory. You can you can this is referred to by many names. Then you have the reset state. Then you have the set state. Then you have the not allowed state. And if you transition this to a K map for Q plus, you are trying to derive an equation for the next state output Q plus in terms of inputs S, R and the previous output Q. So S, R and previous output Q are listed over here as inputs to the K map. Based on the table, you, you enter the things over here, zeros and ones and x's. Simplify. When you simplify, you get the characteristic equation for an S, R latch. Do you treat X as don't care? Yes. So X is a don't care, which is kind of helping us make a bigger group of ones here. And we are getting um, the characteristic equation based on that, right? Q plus equals S or R complement and Q. You can either set the output or you can reset the output if uh, reset the output uh, by using the the, the r uh, input there so you've got a few things uh, that are sort of connected to this sr latch characteristic table or the next state table and the characteristic equation a relationship between the new output as it relates to the new inputs and the old output and the old output was dependent on the previous inputs so i suppose you can you can see the connection why are we calling this sequential why are we calling this a, a case where your outputs are dependent on sequence of past inputs because you see New in output depends on old output and the old output dependent was dependent on the outputs before that, right? So it's all dependent on the sequence of past inputs. Now let's talk about the timing diagrams for an SR latch. Again, we are using causality arrows to indicate that the two outputs over here, Q and QN, are changing depending on the changes that are being made in the S and the R input signals, input controls. So I'm going to zoom in on this one. This is simple. Uh, uh, one thing that I'm assuming here is that my starting Q, I'm assuming that it is a zero and my starting QN is assumed to be a one. That's an assumption that I'm making. Um, but if I was trying to be very technically correct, then I would not know what the values are for some time, right? I don't really know whether it's a zero or a one. Technically, I don't, right? Because it is in the store state to begin with. And if it's in the store state to begin with, what is it storing? Was it storing a one? Was it storing a zero? I don't know. So I'm here assuming that it is storing a zero and a one for Q and QN. However, you have to note that if you want to be technically correct, then there is no good way of knowing what it would be to start off with. But then something happens and then you immediately know. When S goes from 0 to 1, we are actually going from the store state to the set state. And when you do a set, then your output becomes independent of the previous output and you go to a one. So if it was a one, it would have continued to be a one. And if it was a zero, as we assumed, it would have jumped to a one. But that is because of the change in S. And because of that same change in S, even QN would uh, flip, but 
because we assume that it is a one now it's going to go to a zero if it was assumed to be a zero then it would have continued to be a zero right so we went from store to a set state store to begin with then we did a set right um, and then which state do we go into next Come on. Which state are we going to next? And uh, no store, right? Because you see, you were set here. S was one, R was zero. But at this gray line, at that time, and by the way, this is this is x-axis is time, right? This is time. There's a timing diagram. So at this particular time, indicated by the gray vertical line, you went from store to again the store state, right? So you went to store. And when you store, what happens to Q and QN? Well, if it was a, a 1 here, it will continue to be a 1. And if it this was 0, it will continue to be a 0. Right? No problem, Tom. Uh, all right. And then at some other time, we go for the reset state. I think this is what you were looking at earlier. Over here, we go to a reset state. So, whatever the outputs are, now they are going to go jump to a zero. Q is going to jump to a zero and QN is going to uh, jump to a one, complement it. And then you are uh, storing it, right? Then you are storing it here. S is 0 and R is uh, 0. And then you are setting it here. And then you are storing it here. Right. So this simplistic timing diagram is going between only three states. Store, set, reset. And as you can see, Q and QN are behaving quite nicely. There's no meta stability observed here. But that's not always going to be the case. At least theoretically, it's not always going to be the case. You will have a situation like this, where you go from 1, 1 to 0, 0, exactly at the same time. You see this? Exactly at the same time, you went from 1, 1 to 0, 0. And what did that do to both Q and QN? They started oscillating. Zero, they were zeros earlier because you, you had S and R to be a one. So they were zeros to begin with. And then they went once, zero, once, zeros, once, zeros. Go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. See that? So that's your meta stability where it happens when S and R are negated at that exactly at the same time. Uh, also with the assumption that both the NOR gates involved should have the, exactly the same propagation delay. All right, questions about the timing diagram that we saw? So all of these are kind of repeat from the simple timing diagram here where you are you going between store, set, reset. Questions? No. All right, uh, let me move forward here with some timing uh, parameters that we have to be very careful about. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Uh, set, reset, and Q are being monitored. And we are trying to look at two uh, uh, parameters that if we break these timing constraints, then we will have metastability. One is well the the, the the one is the timing parameter the the main one that you have to follow is the minimum pulse width so if you have a pulse so for example over here we have a pulse on the s input right it was zero and then it jumped to one and this is your pulse width if you uh, not follow the minimum pulse width requirement for a SR latch, meaning 
a minimum time for which the S input should be a 1 or the R input should be a 1. If you don't follow that, then you will end up in metastability. Over here, the, the blue region over here is showing that minimum pulse width. So, the timing window that you had to be stable on S was this. You were 1 and even beyond that, so that's good. You obeyed the minimum pulse width requirement over here and here and here. But look at what happened here on the R input you have broken the minimum pulse width requirement there. Minimum pulse width, pulse width minimum, not followed or I should say not satisfied. And because of it, what happened? 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. That's your meta stability. Oh, that is the same as what we discussed. But yes, that's my next uh, next conversation. The property that causes that. Um, so, the first claim is that if you don't follow, if you change the input from 0 to a 1 and then back to 0 very quickly, then you will end up in the meta stability state. I will prove that. Uh, let me talk about uh, some other things that are shown on this slide and then we will talk about why this metastability thing happens. The propagation delay is a finite value and it could be different when the output is changing from low to high and high to low. And it could, the output could be changing because of a change in S or because of a change in R. So the, the terminology that we are using here is when you changed s from 0 to a 1 your q changed from 0 to a 1 it got set but it took some time the time is indicated by t subscript propagation when q changes from low to high because of a change in s right so let me just write that over here in a this is propagation delay propagation delay from S to Q when Q goes from low to high. And with this, you can also, you know, talk about what that is. That is the propagation delay when Q goes from high to low because of a change in R. And this is the minimum pulse width that we are talking about. Obeyed, 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 not satisfied. So let's try to capture this uh, pulse width not being satisfied situation with the the cross coupled configuration again. So what I'll do is I will quickly quickly draw my cross coupled configuration. Excuse the straight lines; these are not going to be very straight. Uh, and here, and here, and here. Uh, and here and here all right and there and there all right so this is my uh, sr latch i've called them r here s here q here q n here right this is our sr latch so let's try to recreate that minimum pulse width uh, scenario so what i'll do is i'll start off um, r and s at zero zero right so this is sort of over here before that they were both zero s and r right um and at that time q was one uh if you hold your pencil at the end of a line it should snap uh, really okay um so i'm trying to recreate that uh, setup highlighted in green here where S is 0, R is 0, and Q right now is 1. So let's suppose I have that situation going on here. R is 0, S is 0, Q is 1, and obviously QN is 0. Right. So that's my um, starting state. And what I did was I made R go to 1 
um, very for very short amount of time. So let's see what happens there. I made R go to 1, uh, sorry, 1 for a very, very short duration of time. When I make this R go to 1 and then also I, I, I later made it go to 0, right? So I'm also going to write that. I didn't change S, this is continued to be a 0, but for this short duration of time, I made it 1. So when I made it 1, what happened to Q? Went to 0, that's right. So this guy went to 0. Now you see what happens. Before this 0 actually comes in over here and this guy turns to 1, I made this back into a 0, right? Because I changed it very quickly, my my state now is r is 0, s is 0, q is 0, qn is 0. What is that? That is exactly what my problem state was, right? 0, 0, 0, 0. I have kind of recreated um, that same not allowed state. We are trying to store that which ended up in metastability. I've kind of recreated that because I did not allow that change in R to be reflected at both outputs. I only allowed it to get reflected at one of the outputs. Do I see that? Yes, how are we doing? So you can change the input to an inverter without it reflecting on the output if you do it fast enough. Right, so if you do it fast enough, then you are kind of recreating that situation of, uh, so this zero, so this one actually changed this guy to zero, right? So that was uh, because of this propagation delay through this. But we did not actually wait long enough for this propagation delay to come in. We changed this back to a zero. When we did that, our inputs became 0 and 0 and our outputs remained at 0 and 0. Recreating that same uh, situation where we tried to store the not allowed state. This is like trying to store not allowed state. Uh, why does it have? Why doesn't it flip? Uh, I don't think I quite understood your question. Why does it happen? See, I changed R from 0 to a 1. When I did that, Q, after the propagation delay of this guy, is going to go from 1 to a 0. But because this is a 0, I still need to wait for this output to try to change this to a 1 but even before that 0 could affect change at qn I changed this r input to a 0 but isn't it just a delay right yeah there is right so suppose this guy is 20 nanoseconds and this guy is 20 nanoseconds delay right and if I changed the if I changed it from 0 to a 1 and 1 to a 0 between 20 sec 10, 20 nanoseconds and 40 nanoseconds time, say 30 nanoseconds, what would happen? This guy would change, but I did not give this guy time to change to 1, which would It'd be easier if I explained without typing, actually. So when that um, 0, so when that goes into the, the bottom uh, NOR gate, its state is like updating, right? Because it'll instantly become a 1. But this output is going to change after this guy uh, pushes a 1 out. Right? I'm saying, but doesn't that happen though? Doesn't it eventually change? Because like, it's just time delay after. So like, it doesn't get updated until well, after it gets fed to it. Right, like, so the opening? output changed over here, but that even if you take a look at a small, small wiring delay, right? Even before that, this guy changed to a zero. That guy was still at zero, right? So this guy is going to be stuck at zero here, which which now means both of these are going to be jumping at once 
and zeros and ones and zeros so we have kind of recreated that same same um thing just because we change we so in other words we did not allow the latch to catch a one or a zero right so when you actually do a set or a reset by by uh, pushing a pulse through if you don't uh, allow the latch to latch on to a one or a zero and quickly change it back you have affected change on one you have not affected change on the other which means that you are back into this meta stability state all right we can, we can talk about more about this um after class if you want but this is you know this is um my take on um what would happen if you change things too fast uh let's see so that's what is kind of creating that problem now let's talk about symbols you have got s r q q n active high inputs active I outputs so if you wanted to draw a symbol for the SR latch this would be it or you could change it to this where you have uh, instead of QN you can call it Q but put a bubble in front of it indicating that it's your active low output but this would not be allowed because here you are calling it QN and you are showing a bubble at the front that's like double negation so this is okay this is okay but this is not next if you have an sr latch for a nor version you can also have sr latch with the nand version so this is two nand gates connected in that cross coupled configuration so let me write that first this is cross coupled nand gates configuration and you would exactly the same way as we have uh, analyzed the NOR version, you could analyze this uh, circuit to realize this characteristic table. A lot of things are going to be very sim uh, similar in terms of the states. Let us identify where the NAND gates are really. So there is one two input NAND gate over there. There is another two input NAND gate over there. Right. So these are my two two inputs two input NAND gate again I have connected the output of the bottom NAND gate to the input of the top one and I have connected the uh, output of the top one to the input of the other and I did that by uh, uh, I have also complemented the inputs earlier I had you see in the in the previous case i had r input going to a q output and s aligned with the complemented form but over here when you go to the nand version you have s an active low s go to q an active low r go to qn so we have switched the um, order of your reset and set input. Also, we have made the um, inputs active low. So, so you can, you, if you if you want to take a look at this, this is really two NAND gates connected in that back to back so you have this guy as s not r right s underscore l and this is r underscore l and then this is still q and q n and this would be our characteristic characteristic table of the nand version active low inputs q and active low q now let's try to identify the four states of a sr latch so what do you guys think the first state is b 
that yes that's our not allowed state because s is zero s underscore l is zero and r underscore l is zero which means that both set and reset are active it is like the one one case from before so this is our not allowed state in which my q and qn are both one earlier they were zero uh, but they are one right now because of the nand gates as opposed to nor gates from before next what is the state next are you setting it are you resetting it setting it yes s underscore l is active setting it what should be next resetting it okay r underscore l is active so resetting it q is zero qn is one reset it and then the last one is going to be called both of them are inactive it is like our s equals r equals zero state so this is our uh, store state now if you were asked to um, validate this right verify this how would you verify this So suppose the question is, um, given the two cross-coupled configuration, uh, two cross-coupled NAND gate configuration, how would you verify this two table? How would you verify this characteristic table? Where would you start the analysis? Uh, use the circuit okay so you would use this circuit but what would be your um, process so what i'm trying to say is exactly in the same manner as you did nor version you would do the nand version right so for example you could start with the set state or the reset state and then you try to store them see if that works or not and then finally you can come into this not allowed state you will see that q and qn will be one in that one and then you can try to store that and you will see meta stability happen there but that's exactly how you would verify same way as we did nor version but now you would have to be looking at the truth table for a nand circuit instead of a nor circuit uh, now we said let us try to get rid of so there were two problems right one was the not allowed state and the other problem was uh, that if you try to store the not allowed state you were end up uh, you were ending up in some problem uh, hold on right so there were two problems there so what we are going to do is we still have the s and r there is still an sr latch but we are adding a new input called c which is going to be acting as our enable we want to gain so let me try to explain what this is going to do gain uh, another way another way to store so that we can try to eliminate s equals 0 r equals 0 and s equals r equals 1 so we are trying to get away from the states in which both the inputs are equal because those are creating trouble this guy is not allowed and when you try to store it it gives you meta stability so what you are trying to do with this enable is try to find another way to store things uh, can you make it edge triggered with a with to make it a flip flop yes by putting latches back to back one after the other you go for edge triggering but that's coming up on tuesday of next week that's what is on the plate next week uh let's see let's see if this checks out 
So what is this? Where have we seen this before? Uh, is that backwards? What do you mean? Uh, you have two cross-coupled NAND gates. So what is that? It is my SR latch with NAND gates. Two cross-coupled, that's where my, all of this is happening. Right? Setting, storing, resetting and all that is happening. But I have extended the inputs out by adding two more NAND gates. So in this particular configuration, I have four two input NAND gates. S, R, set, reset, Q, QN, complemented output and true output. But we have a, this new C. Uh, actually, this particular configuration is call, also called in different by different names. So, uh, other names are uh, clocked SR latch, clocked SR latch. Another name is uh, gated SR latch, or SR latch with enable. Just because of this C input, which stands for um, the the clock. Andrew says, why do you want to eliminate R equals S equals one? Because I don't want that to be allowed because if I somehow went from that state to the store state, I would have a problem, right? I think it was you first who suggested that we will put a NOT gate between the R and the S inputs. Right. So my, my, my goal over here is let us try to eliminate both of these cases so that S and R are never the same. But if I did that, I will lose the store state. So I'll have another way to store things by using this C input. So I want to gain another way of doing this so that eventually I can get rid of uh, S and R being the same. All right, so let's let's try to see what what happens here. So if C is your clock or some control or enable, this can of course be either a one or be a zero. So let us start with one. So if this is a one, what do you see over here? S complement, right. And if that is a one, what do you see over here? R complement. So this would be one NAND S, which is S complement. This would be one NAND R, that would be R complement. So you see, we have as we have literally recreated our SR latch with NAND gates. You see this? S complement, R complement, Q, QN, two cross coupled NAND gates. We have literally recreated that over here. When does it happen this way? When C is one. So when C is one, we are, we are, we are here, right? So when C is one, uh, let me let me highlight this. All of those cases, C is one. When C is held high, you exactly have the same characteristic table as you did before. Not allowed set reset store. Over here, because we have. Uh, S and R both as active high, it is going to be store, reset, set, not allowed. So we have, when C is one, that is exactly like what we had for the SR latch. Right? So this was store, 
this was reset this was set this was not allowed but now if you make c0 what happens so let's try to make c0 and see what happens to the outputs of the NAND gates. What do you guys think? When C is 0, what is the output of the NAND gates? The one. Thank you. NAND, not AND. They both go to 1, right? 0, NAND, anything will be a 1. 0, NAND, anything will be a 1. So both the inputs here are 1. Where is that situation? That store, exactly. We have got a way to store. I no longer need... I no longer need this store. I have an, got another way to store. Right? Now, no matter what S is or R is, could be a 0, could be a 1, we have your Q is now the same as last Q. Uh, but don't you need the invert? We do. We are going to call it a different latch. So, this is one type of latch, SR latch, right? So I can, I can summarize the SR latch, clocked SR latch or SR latch with enable as, when C is one, this guy is behaving like an SR latch. Exactly. But when C is zero, it gives me the ability to store. You guys see that? All right. Since you guys have been pestering me about this, this NOT gate, this NOT gate has waited for so long. It is here now. Uh, now we are able to get rid of the case where both the inputs can be the same. Because this rescued us, right? The C input gave us the ability to store. When you get the ability to store, you can get rid of this guy and you can also get rid of this guy. Because you have the ability to store, set, reset. That's all you need. And you can get rid of these two states in which S and R are the same by putting a NOT gate uh, at the D input. What is D? D stands for data latch. Uh, why do SR latch exist in things? <laughs> so, SR latch exists because of the set and reset capability. Uh, and D latch exists because if you have only one input that you want to store, you will use D. Um, D latch or D flip flops later on uh, have a very significant place in the construction of registers. So you are absolutely right. It's kind of making the SR latch pointless. Uh, but there are places where you use SR latch. Actually, SR latch combined with some other functionality gives you a JK latch or a JK flip-flop. We are going to talk about that uh, slightly later. But right now we are talking about the data latch uh, that can have racing. This is the data latch. So, can somebody tell me what this is? Where have we seen this before? Two NAND gates followed by two cross-coupled uh, NAND gates gated SR, right? So this is my uh, SR latch with enable that we just, uh, that we just analyzed. This is SR latch with enable. 
enable is our clock C, right? Um, now you have D as your data input. You have the inverter to make sure that this guy and this guy, the inputs S and R are never going to be the same. So if you put D here, this guy will be D complement. They will always be complements of each other. What happens when I make C0? When I make C0, do I store or do I, what, what, what happens when I make C, uh, C0? If that is 0, there is a 0 there, there is a D over here. And this is a 0 and there is a D complement over there. So, so what happens here? D NAND 0 is what? A 1. And D complement NAND 0 is also a 1. When 1 goes into it, 1 goes into it, that is what? That's a SR latch with NANDs. That is going to be uh, P is 1, right? So that is your I either setting it or resetting it, right? Both the inputs are 1. Active low because NAND. Right. So uh, both of them are 1. So it's like both of them are 0, right? So that would be store. You're right. So I should say store here. Where is that? That is right here. When C is 0, you are able to store things. I suppose I can also make this into a blue. What about 1? When I make C1, what happens here and here? One NAND D, E complement, and one NAND D complement. This is going to be D. That's right. So your input to your um, SR latch with NAND gates is D and D complement. It could be a zero, could be a one. If it is a 0, then Q will be a 0. Active low inputs, if that is a 0, Q is going to be a 0. If that is a 1, that is going to be a 1. So by making C as 1, whenever C is 1, whatever goes in as data is reflected at the output. So with this, you get set or reset functionality. And with this, uh, in blue, you get the store. So you're still able to achieve all those objectives. Make one, store it. Make zero, store it. You can still still do that. Um, is there a good reason to use SR latch? So yeah, 555 timer uses uh, an SR latch. Um, but you could also make that uh, using a JK, uh, JK latch too. So you see, all you have to do here is provide the data over here and control C when you want to store it and when you want to change it. When you want to change it, Make C1, change it to whatever you want to store later. And as soon as you make C0, it is stored. You guys see that? All right. So that's your data latch uh, playing a very important role in registers. That, will, that, will, you, that you will see in registers a lot. Now... There are a few timing parameters that we are going to add to this list. There is a propagation delay that is going to be repetitive from before, right? So from C to D. So when C changes, uh, C or D, when C changes or D changes, 
the output changes after certain propagation delay indicated by those causality arrows as well as captured in this uh, notation here propagation delay when output changes from high to low or low to high when there is a change in c or when there is a change in d exactly the same as before but now we are adding two more timing constraints which is you cannot change the input before or after there is a change in c the edge of c one is called setup time and the other is called hold time if you break those conditions it is like breaking the minimum pulse width requirement for the sr latch which ends up in meta stability in the output q so let us try to define what is setup time the whole time is simply going to be uh, after this is before so uh, this is setup time setup time is minimum time for which your input d has to be stable before keyword before change in c are we breaking setup time anywhere we have and we, have, we are indicating this timing window as the timing window for that uh, change not to be done you see over here so the top input is d then there is c you have changed d and you have changed c after so if you did what would be hold time hold time would be hold time would be minimum time d has to be stable minimum time d has to be stable after change in c so the change is happening over here did we break the setup time or did we break the hold time between 4 5 d changes after c and q changes with d uh, between 4 and 5 so the the, the the i'm talking about the changes in d that are pretty close to the changes in c um, indicated by these blue timing windows right so in this blue timing window there is a change but d was stable there no problem d was stable there no problem but d wasn't stable here in that blue region the blue region is indicating that there was a change in c so we broke so we changed d before change in c so we broke setup time that's right and what did that cause that caused metastability in the output queue um, now I want you guys to tell me one thing here observe when the output Q is changing. Can you guys tell me when is Q able to change? When C is 1 and D changes. This is quite critical, right? When C is 1, Uh, and D changes is fine, right? That's the only way to change uh, Q. But when C is 1, 
that's the only time you ha the output can change it cannot change when c is 0 the output cannot change when c is 0 here 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 cannot change you see not changing not changing not changing even if there is a change in d it's not changing um okay how about here uh, because th there are there are four things to a uh, timing diagram right so there is low there is high there is a high to low and there is a low to high four things so the output q cannot change when c is zero or when c is going from low to high or when c is going from high to low it can only change when c is one which is why i'm going to call this a level sensitive device you want to change things adjust the level of the clock you don't want to change things adjust the level of the clock but you are playing with the level of the clock oh sorry here level of the clock as opposed to the edge of the clock this observation uh, hopefully if you take this to the the next lecture uh, we will see a good transition uh, between flip the latches and flip flops um can i also say that when c is zero what is happening when c is zero when c is zero uh it is stored right q is stored q holds that's right q uh stores or holds it's, it's the same but when c is one can i say this when c is one q follows d can i say that so you see output q is following uh d as long as c is one you see this uh i'm going to highlight that window maybe here so all this time c is one in yellow and you see what is q doing it is exactly doing the same thing as d is doing uh it was uh, the propagation delays took some time so i then low then that i then low then that the blues match so here are two statements that are an outcome of a d latch when you make c1 your output follows input d but when you make c0 output is stored uh, active and then they're waiting then yes that's right when it that's exactly you, you, what you are what we are trying to do is gain more control over when things can change latches give you sort of a loose control over things because they are level sensitive flip flops will give us a little bit more precise control over when we can change things because they are edge sensitive devices more about that in the next lecture all right let's talk about um, the last type of latch that we have uh, which is the j k latch which stands for jump kill latch flip flop equals synchronous latch equals asynchronous uh flip flop equals synchronous latch equals asynchronous uh let's revisit that I can I can I can accept that flip flops are edge sensitive. Why is this latch sound so hardcore? <laughs> I don't know. All right, let's let's talk about. Oh, you mean the jump kill? Oh yeah. I that. I, well, it is like set reset, right? Jumping an output is like setting the output. K 
killing the output is like resetting the output. So it's kind of like the SR functionality. However, we are replacing the not allowed state with the toggle state. So JK latch is really uh, an SR latch with toggle functionality. Functionality. So, so far we were, can you use this encounter? Absolutely, yes. Uh, it's a cooler cousin of SR latch. That's, that's uh, one way of looking at it. Yes, it is cooler. Uh, you, uh, Andrew, absolutely. This is exactly what you would use. Uh, you can use a, um, a you would use a JK or flip-flop or you could use a toggle flip-flop, T flip-flop to make counters. Uh, for registers, uh, data flip-flops, D flip-flops are more appropriate for registers. All of those things are, are coming up in our lectures. Uh, so, what is the next state table of a JK latch? So, you see over here, we have JK, earlier we had SR. They are going to appear very similar to before. Hold when S, uh, JK and J and K are 0. So, that means Q plus equals Q, there. Reset or kill when k is 1, j is 0. Set or jump when j is 1, uh, k is 0. And then the last one is toggle. Whatever it was before will toggle or will flip. So if it was 0 earlier, it will become a 1 next. If you make J and K 1 and 1. And the same thing applies here. If it, J and K are 1 and 1. And if the old output was 1. It will toggle or flip. Or complement to a 0. So you have got 4 states now. Set, reset, store and toggle. 4 useful things that you can do. Earlier you could not toggle. You could only set, reset, hold. With this, you can do that. Toggling. Now, exactly the same way as we did in for the um, SR latch. Next state table, K map, characteristic equation. Characteristic equation. We can do the same thing with, with this. The only difference, the toggle state is new. So, a state, next state table, Put the entries into a K map. Inputs are J, K and the previous output Q. J, K and the previous output Q. Um, what, do you, what do you mean? Why you group like that? Uh, group which one? You are not allowed to use Q. The Q equals 1. Uh... You're not allowed to use Q equals 1. Sorry. Sorry to miss that. Alright. So, um, JKQ. The K map looks funny. What do you mean? How is it funny? I thought it was... All right, we are not vibing right now, guys. Uh, you box the Q equals one. Oh, wow, okay. Better? Okay. So, uh, in the next state table, we can transition that into a K-map. Group the ones to get the simplest equation. When you do that, you get the characteristic equation. If you know J and K inputs and the previous output Q, then you can tell me what the next output Q plus is going to be. That is going to be the characteristic equation of your 
जे के लैच जे क्यू बार प्लस के बार क्यू सो दीज कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इक्वेजन एंड द नेक्स्ट एट टेबल्स यू विल सी दैम फॉर मे बी फोर मोर वीक्स अंटिल वी यू नो ऑलमोस्ट एट द एंड ऑफ द सेमेस्टर अंटिल देन यू आर गोन कीप सींग दैम Uh, I think that is all I have for you guys. Uh, I'm going to stop recording here.